Hi, and welcome to the Jack Dean Nut Arena where normally it's basketball coming your way. Instead, we have men's volleyball action here tonight as Goshen College in town taking on your Lincoln Lynx here today in their first home opener here as well, along with Banner Night here in this one. I'm, we'll get to that in just a quick second. However, though, Elijah Cox, Matty Geese with you as well here on the broadcast. Again, Elijah, just looking ahead here, what are some things we can look out for here in tonight's contest from the Lynx? Um, I'm really hoping to see some aggressive um, movement on the net, some swings, and a very varied offense from the setter, really making taking use of all of the Are different you? hitters rather than just focusing on one or two so that we're seeing that our offense is hard Are to you? defend against by the other team. Um, and just really aggressive full arm swings and serves as well. Again, now Maddie and both of you new to the broadcast, it is okay. Maddie, we'll start with a simple question here. Who do you think is really going to stand out tonight from this Lynx team? Um, I think that Ramon Matos is probably going to be the one that you're going to look for in this game. He's a really strong hitter. He's a very good all the way around player. And I just think that he's going to be the star of the game tonight. Again, this is a Lynx team was red hot, won against Goshen College. That was the, the first game of the season. They lost the first set but then won the next three pretty handedly in that contest. So trying to do that again here, possibly even talks about, Maddie, a little bit of a sweep here tonight on Banner Night. A little bit of a sweep, like they're trying to go for the, the take it in three games? Yeah, I think, well, they've played them before and they beat them in four or five, I believe. But I think that this is going to be a great game, great competition, but I do think that the Lynx are going to take it in three. Again, I, I couldn't agree with you more here in this one. Elijah, real quick. What's your thoughts here on tonight's contest? Do you think the Lynx take it in three as well? I do. I uh, Just watching the team's practice as well, we can see that overall offensively it seems that we're superior. Um, now I can't say as much for the defense because I haven't seen them in action yet in the game, but our offense is looking really good. I'd say that we take it in three really quick. And we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, though, Banner will be revealed. So don't go anywhere more of men's volleyball right here on LCTV. I received a scholarship at Lincoln College. I'm a dual major at Lincoln College. I'm president of student activities. I sing alto in the choir. I'm a dual sport athlete. I became a leader. I found a mentor. I found a community. I, I found, found my future, future at Lincoln College. We are back here in the Jack D. Nutt Arena where, again, announcing the lineups here for Lincoln College in this one. And, well, you saw the, the announcements here in this one. But, however, though, this was the revealing of the championship banner we're about to see right here from, again, Greg Scott, Michael Wesley, Charles Carter, and Brian Oriana is over there, Ramon Matos, D. Coleman as well here for the Lynx going to unveil the banner here for the first time. We already have four trying to make it five the first here for the national champs of Lincoln College men's volleyball team here in this one. A few of the returners in that ball game. This team right here that you see 45 and six record on the season so far again nine and oh in the tournament again did not lose a game not even came close. Maddie what did you see you were there. What did you see from that? It was a really fun experience. I've never seen a team come together and play so well. They had such great energy the entire time, and I really think that that's what helped them win their national title. I couldn't agree with you more here in this one. Again, just rolling all over, and Elijah, just looking at some of the names down here, really a lot of returners. Yeah, that's exciting because, you know, they already know how to work well together and communicate, and they know what they're expecting from each other. So we're going to see... Like I said earlier, some really aggressive offense and defensive strategy as well. It'll be an exciting game to watch. And the Lynx come in 3-3 three and three on the season. Goshen College just 2-7 and seven so far this season. 0-2 on the road 
for Goshen College here in this one. However, though, they're looking to get their first road win and also spoil this Lynx banner night here in this one. Again, now, Maddie, you are a women's volleyball player here in this one. Before we get to this question, we're going to take a quick break for the National Anthem. When we come back, though, we'll have starting lineups coming your way next. dent in that this one no were you texting and driving again yes hi leah hi dad sorry about your bumper <laughs> <laughs> One fifty over ninety. One eighty over one eleven. One sixty over one ten. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it, or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. We're back in the Jack Dean Nut Arena here. Again, you see Coach Mark Tibbet and his assistant Alec Esparza here in this one, a former Lincoln College alumni here in this one. However, though, again, just looking at this, Maddie, just tell me a little bit, what can we expect out of tonight's contest? I mean, you're, you've seen these guys practice, you've seen them play before. What can we expect? What kind of competition are we looking at? I mean, they play hard, they hit hard, they talk to each other, they always have such great energy on the court. So playing Goshen, I think that it's just gonna be the same thing for them. They're gonna play hard. I know that the last time they played them, it was a battle for the Lynx. So hopefully they've learned from what this team has done and can do, and they use that to their advantage to beat them tonight. And we mentioned already Goshen College that was, it was an interesting contest here in this one. I, the last time we, I, like we said, they won in four sets, but they lost the first one. Elijah, how, how important is that first set to kind of get ahead early? I think it's a really important set, especially for the, men the mental aspect of the game for the players. Um, it, winning that first set kind of keeps you in that role to keep on going and keep on getting points. Um, so losing that first set can be devastating to a team, especially because they feel as if they're not performing as well as they know they can. And um, they're looking to perform as well as they did in that national championship game. And when they beat the University of Wisconsin, E.S. St. Clair in that one, again, one in three sets, 25 to 19, 22, or 25, 22, and then 15 to nine in the final set here in this one. So again, looking for that one, but a lot of returners for this squad here in this one. And again, Maddie, what can we expect out of Charles Carter here today? He was the first, first team all tournament award winner last year in the national tournament. What can we expect here tonight? Well, he's definitely gonna bang some balls, put up some big blocks and really be a key player for the Lynx tonight. I mean, all around, he's such a great player. He's very strong when he hits. He has such great energy and he, the team really looks to him for like a pick me up almost. Should be interesting to see here, Goshen, both teams really the same colors here tonight. The Lynx gonna go white and black along with Goshen being more of in the, the purple and gray. Now. Some newer uniforms here in this one. Do you like this type of style here, or do you prefer maybe some colors? I like it. I think it looks nice. It's minimal, and it's not distracting. So I like it. Elijah, real quick, your thoughts? I like the uniforms as well. They're sleek. They're minimal, and that's why I like them. It's, I'm excited. Well, it's interesting to see here who we got serving because there's no number two on our Goshen College roster here, but I'm, I'm gonna go with Rodriguez here in this one. He's gonna take the first crack here. Does get over away, Matos right there, but set there by Orena, and then it's blocked at the net. Again, recovered though by the Lynx. We'll see if Scott can do something here, but a nice dig there by Goshen. Here they come back the other way now. Once again, this is a Lynx team. They're, like Matty said, they're gonna be hard hitting, 
all night long, coming right at you the entire day, as that's a little floater there from Rabajiva, and ends up in favor of Goshen College right there. Again, what, what did you guys see there in the first point? It, I noticed immediately that we're setting straight to Ramos, which is smart because he's an aggressive swinger. However, going straight back to him doesn't vary the offense very much, and so your blockers are able to get there. They know the ball's coming to him. A service ace there yet again by Rodriguez. Could not get it back over the net. There was the Lynx, and it's 2-0 Goshen here early. But again, long way to go. We do play 225. Maddie, again, a women's volleyball player here in this one. How important it is, is it to get off to a good start? It's extremely important because if you don't perform well in the first set, then the momentum carries with you through the rest of the game. So if you start good, more than likely you're going to end on a very good bounce. And another service ace there. Three nothing lead here for Goshen so far early in this one as the Lynx going to have some catching up to do here early in this first set. As yet again, already going to Jack Linder, but he does save it this time as Oriana gets it over. Here they come back the other way as Goshen and it's slammed down yet again by Rabajive for the kill right there. Already you're seeing him be a big part of this action, Elijah. How can they stop him here on the defensive side of the net? I think it's just at this point where you're, you're kind of going to have to anticipate where he's going and really get that block up there. With no effective block, there's no way of stopping a hard hit ball like that. Rodriguez does get it over the net. Matos, though, with the kill right there as it was deflected at the net. But the Lynx finally on the board here, and hopefully that'll get them going. Maybe a little bit of nerves on, on Banner Knight? Yeah, probably. And, you know, the other team had a four to nothing, you know, run and point there. So now that they're kind of out of that funk, they're able to gain some momentum, hopefully, here in this next play. And Mike Weasley sent the serve over, but however, though yet again, it would be Sauter who throws down the kill for Goshen. So they're off to a great start. They capitalize right back on the other end, back to a four-point lead. Looks like this go around, interesting here, all these numbers are way off here for, for us on the roster sheet. But again, it was a point there for the Lynx. Make it 5-2 here, still in favor of Goshen. But again, Maddie, this is a team that they just, they have that type of mindset. You were talking about it earlier before the broadcast where I don't think they're trying to be denied here on, on Banner Night. Probably not. <laughs> I mean, if it were me playing, I would want to beat the team that just revealed their banner. But, I mean, they are coming off, and they are at a very strong start. They're hitting really well. They're talking to each other, so there's no miscommunications on the court. And they're just playing very well together right now. And another kill there for Goshen, as we have the substitution here in this one. Laura came in as that one dug out there by Key Lion as Matos just has to send it back over. See if Goshen can try to capitalize here in this one. They kind of have to do the same thing. Wall just from the back row has to just tip it back over. Charles Carter did not quite get all of that one. And we'll see if Goshen can respond, trying to put it in the back corner. They could not. There's a good set there from Washington to Matos. And there's another big kill there for Ramon Matos. And it's back to within three here for the Lynx. 6-3 is our score. Matty, how can they keep him involved here in this one? As long as he stays open and he knows, okay, the blockers, they need to pull the other hitters away from them. So that way they can open up a little bit of space on the court so he can find those holes to hit it in. And he gets the kill, or the service ace right there for Matos. Puts the links back within two. He's now serving. Let's see if he can't do it one more time here. As he, he smacks that one this time to the left back corner and they do say it was in I do believe it was the right call as well as it, now just down by one here Elijah how does this kind of build some momentum here when you see one server like Matos just kind of serving a few times in a row here this is great because he's now he's on a roll so now he's really got this momentum moving forward and he's going to continue doing this and serving aggressively because it's working for him and the other team's unable to respond block there by the net by the links they're gonna try it one more time as this time it was trying to be tipped by Robert Jive, and instead he could not. And just sent back over the net is Goshen. There's Washington with a set, and here comes again. Linder could not get that one over, and the Lynx gonna just have to send it right back over and let Goshen kind of set up their offensive attack. Nice save from again Matos, but out of bounds though, and goes away 
but gives the point to Goshen. However, though, it seems like I like some of this hustle here early, but can they sustain it through five sets? Yes, they can. As Elijah? long as they keep talking to each other and keep the high energy up, I think that they're going to be fine. And Robert Jive now serving here for Goshen as it does hit the net, but it's trying to just, just barely get over it. And that is the case. It can hit the net and still fall on the other side and still count as Goshen did it right there. Not always the prettiest way, Elijah, but still does get the job done. Yeah, exactly. And the other team doesn't usually anticipate that. You know, they never know if it's going to go over or not. Um, can make it hard to really return the serve well. And as we talked about it right there, I, it seems like I have this type of karma. It seems when, I, when they shoot free throws in basketball, I always end up jinxing them by saying something. I'm glad it works out in our favor this go around as he sends it right into the net as Key Lion will set the serve here for the Lynx. This one blocked at the net, though. It looked like Coleman might have had a piece of it. Wesley's there. Now Golson just trying to save it. They cannot as the Lynx with the kill all of a sudden kind of hanging around in this one. Maybe a little bit of a slow start with getting some of these nerves out of the way right here on Banner Night, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would. And I, it was great for uh, Wesley there to take advantage of that overpass and really turn that into a point for the Lynx. Goshen just trying to send it back over here, set there by Washington to Wesley, but just a little long as it goes out as it's 9-7 here in favor of Goshen. Looks like the freshman Andy Bennett set to serve here for Goshen College. Goes to Linder. He sends it back over the net, and it was just tipped back there by Sauter. And Lynx weren't expecting it. It does fall. Now all of a sudden, 10-7 here in this one. Maddie, now women's volleyball player here in this one. When do you think Coach Tibbet should possibly take a timeout? I would say if they don't get the ball within the next two or three points here, he'll probably call a timeout to regroup the players and just get them back in the right mindset and hopefully get their energy up and their confidence levels back up too. And Goshen, they're just trying to keep all the momentum right now. There's a good set by Washington to Linder and he slams it home for the kill. And here comes Scott and Oriana back in, or into the ball game here as the Lynx pull within two. And anything, Elijah, that you're noticing out on the floor right now that maybe the Lynx could do a little bit better? Yeah, there are some holes in the back. Um that aren't really being covered. We're a little far up, so serving further back and then also going for more of a wide hit at the net would be a smart option right now. As again, Goshen with the kill right there. 11-8 is the score here in set number one and best of five. As we have another substitution coming in, Geeman checks back in here for Laura. He will set the serve. Does get it over right to Matos, though. Right to Oriana. He's going to set it up for Scott. He does drill it hard. However, those dug out by Goshen. Going back the other way now. Once again, the Lynx setting it back up for Wesley this time. And it does tip off the hands of the defenders up front, but still down and counts here for the Lynx. 11 9 now in favor of the Lynx here, or in favor of Goshen so far. But it seems like that, that front row really starting to give Goshen a little bit of trouble now. Yes, especially Wesley in the middle there. Um, it seems like every time the Lynx are kind of having a fall on luck, Wesley is able to get a point from the middle there, and it just puts him right back in, in pace to move forward and ahead of the other team. Good block there from Scott at the net. Sends it down and make it 11-10 now as the Lynx pull within one as Linder set to serve. As Goshen... Again, from the back row this time, Robert Jive just a little too long here. And all of a sudden, we are tied now at 11. And you see it right there again. Jim Daughtery wants to call this timeout right here in this one. And I believe, as we're going to stay right here, tied at 11. Maddie, we'll start with you. What have you seen so far out of the Lynx? And they came out a little bit slow. What do you think they can improve on? I think that if they communicate more, then that way there won't be obviously any miscommunications and they can figure out where to put the ball and who to set it to and stuff. And I also think that they just need to keep doing what they're doing. They're doing a great job hitting. They're doing a really good job closing the block and they're really making Goshen work for the points that they're earning. Now, Elijah, with you here in this one, what do you think as we just saw a replay of something right there. I don't quite know what exactly it was. They didn't 
didn't nobody wanted to tell me in the ear. However, though, Elijah, what did you see kind of before that timeout that the Lynx kind of were doing a little bit better than Goshen? Uh, they're really just swinging aggressively, and they're kind of moving from hitter to hitter, as opposed to Goshen, who is just sticking with one single hitter, and it's not really working out for them currently. Um, as now we're tied up. And coming out of the timeout, it will be Lynx to serve here in this one as they're looking for the first lead of the game here. If they can possibly put down a service ace here from Jack Linder. Does get it over the net, just tipped back there, but Matos and Wall kind of went up right for it, but they're going to say he, I believe they crossed the net there in a way. Maddie or Elijah, one of you can clarify here for me, but the Lynx do come away with the point. Yes, that was a net violation, so anytime a player touches the net, it is considered a violation, and the point is awarded to the opposite team. So the Lynx will regain the serve here in this one as Oriana just has to send it back over. Goshen now going for the kill, but again, Linder was right there, but Scott will take it as it's off the hands of Goshen at the net. And now all of a sudden, Matos, Wesley, and Scott starting to pick up the pace here a little bit for here for the Lynx. Yeah. Scott, as a shorter player, too, really taking advantage of that taller block to tool the block for the point there. And it's tipped at the net there by Matos. Now he's going to get it back. He's going to have to just send it to across the court. However, just a tad bit long here in this one. So that'll put it at 13-12 now in favor still of the Lynx. But this is going to be a close throughout. How, Elijah, how can a team, either one, kind of pull away and kind of separate themselves from each other? It's really all about getting into their rotation and really communicating with each other and doing exactly what they're doing right now. Good hits, not afraid to swing into the block aggressively to really take advantage of the fact that the block is taller than the hitter at the time in that specific situation. Scott with another kill right there, but a service error goes on Wesley as he was trying to go for the back corner. However, though, 14-13 is the score. Looks like some substitution here. It looks like Key Lion came back in for Wesley here in this one, and he's serving as the libero here so far in this first set. Goshen does get it back over. However, though, is Scott trying to one more time, and I believe he might have said he touched the net, or four hits, excuse me, as it's all tied up here at 14. Now, Maddie, how hard is it knowing that there's a banner hanging and knowing that you were a part of that and you're still trying to go out there and play this game right now as that serve a little long there from Goshen College. It'll give the point back to the Lynx so they retake the lead. But again, how does, how does that fare a little bit? Can you explain that? Again, how, how do you, you kind of take it out of your mind that there's a banner hanging that, and that you were a part of it, even though you have to kind of kind of scratch all that out and play this game here today? I mean, it's hard. You know, you have a banner hanging in front of your face, and it's hard to... Some miscommunication there by the Lynx. They let that one fall. Make it, again, all tied up at 15 here in this one. But, Maddie, what were you saying there about, about, the, about the banner? They have such a great motivation in front of them, so for them to ignore it, it's probably hard for them because they do know what they're capable of and what they can achieve and have achieved. So to be playing how they are right now, a little scrappy, a little on a roller coaster, I would say, it's a little hard for them. The Lynx with another point right there. They lead it back up by one as in low rough. We'll check back in here. As looks like Matos set to serve. Goes to the back row. It was a good set. Or actually, it was a set, but a miscommunication there on Laura's part. And he, I don't know if they just didn't see it there, but how does that kind of affect you once you see something like that, Elijah, happen on your team? It's, it can be discouraging, especially because you know that you're good, good players. But again, you have an aggressive serve coming at you, too. That can be frustrating and can cause miscommunications as well. Key line with a good save right there. Matos this time goes right to the right. Everybody thought he was going left, and it was a good play and nice setup there from the Lynx. But let's talk about some of those reactions. It 
sometimes these these players and these guys they hit it so hard that the initial dig it goes back over the net and how can you react to something like that your best bet at that point is just to play defense because you know that the offense on the link side is going to come back and hit that overpass right back at you in your face so a good defense there is really all you can do at that point service error on matos 18 16 now goshen set to serve here in Rabajive as he goes to Key Lion. Set there from Washington to Lindor, but blocked at the net by Goshen. And that gives them the point that they much desperately needed here in this one to kind of keep this one close. 18-17 now here with Rabajive getting to serve one more time. And takes his time. I do like the fact that some of these have to go straight up with it, but he comes up with a, an ace right there as Keyline tried to save it, but he just couldn't get there in time. Elijah, how big are momentum shifters when you get an ace like that? It's a, it's a really confident feeling. You're able to carry that momentum into the next serve as well. So you're, you're just building upon the momentum prior and just makes for a good play. Coleman with the kill right there, Maddie. You're, I believe you were an outside hitter, weren't you not? Right side. Right sure. side, Cl <laughs> close. I'm still learning some of these positions here in this one. But how can how can a right side hitter really kind of attack the ba or the, attack the volleyball kind of like these guys are doing tonight? If you work the line, because line is very difficult. If you're not familiar with how to hit it, that's always a good one. Or if you can go hard cross, that's always good. And you can always tool off the block to get your point for your team. And now we saw Matos come over here to the official. Talk to us a little bit about that. Only one, it's the captain, if I'm correct, has to go to the official. Yes, only the floor captain for the team can talk to the ref. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of people coming up at him and nobody wants to deal with more than two angry volleyball players. <laughs> and a kill right there from Goshen ties it back up at 19 as Sauter came back in. And th that serve right there from Bennett, just a little bit to the right and out, as that will give the point back to the Lynx on the service air. Here's another replay of it right here. You see the nice say, or the dig right there from Keyline back to Matos, who just sends it right through both defenders and throws it down. And we have another timeout here in this one. Maddie, you, these guys love to chant. They love to chant during timeouts. You ladies love the chant yes, during a timeout. Tell us a little bit about that. Where does that come from? And does that it does it affect the other team? I'm not gonna lie, we kind of stole it from Parkland because when they did it to us my freshman year, it really got in our heads and the prior or the year after we thought about it, we sat down as a team and we said we need to start doing these things to get the energy up on our bench and then it also if the cheers are simple enough, the crowd can get involved, and it's really a big energy booster for your team. Yeah, Elijah, like she mentioned the crowd trying to get involved here in this one. Does that get in the head of Goshen a little bit if they start taking a couple timeouts, kind of, you know, back-to-back -back type of points there? Yeah, it, it definitely can get into their heads. Uh, I mean, I think that's with any sport, too, you know. Uh, the crowd plays a big role in how well your home team performs. So of course, yeah, it gets in the opposing team's heads. See the Lynx lead right here by one, 2019 so far, looking to take set number one, which they could not do the first time against Goshen. So we'll see if they can improve on that one right here. Also trying to get back to over 500 if they can win this entire match here today. A nice serve there from, I believe it was Oriana. And it's now Goshen just on the attack, but Key Lion right there, set by Oriana to Linder, blocked at the net, though saved yet again, dug out by Wall. Here comes Goshen on the attack from the back row. Key Lion there, set once again by Oriana, but Wesley was blocked at the net, so we're tied back up again here at 20, and it seems like both teams kind of having, having a very good ch chance so far at blocking shots at the net so far. I mean, when you have such a big block like that, how can you not hit into it? I mean, they have to be smart about where they put the ball. They could always tip over the block or push deep corners in places that aren't being covered by the defensive specialists. So the Lynx really need to just 
sit and think, you know, where's a smarter place that I can put the ball? Again, 21-20 now in favor of the Lynx, but and tie us right back up here in this one. We're tra basically trading points left and right here in this one. First it was a service error, and then once again here for Goshen College, as now it looks like Rodriguez set to serve. Trying to let it go out was Linder, and they do say it was just out of bounds. It should be interesting to see if we can't get a, a little bit of a replay. That was obviously just a little close here in this one. They do award it to the Lynx, though, however, 22-21 as Wesley set to serve. Does get it over the net. They go right over to Robin Jive, right back to Wesley, and he can't get dug it out. So we'll see if maybe we can't possibly see that one more time here in this one. And now, well, maybe not as it's tied at 22. As, again, still no number 21 on the roster. I'm going to have to go down there and see who exactly that is. I don't know who gave us these rosters here in this one, but definitely not working as Matos had it blocked. Oriana trying his best to kind of keep it up with his foot, but, again, could not. Now we have a timeout taken this time by Coach Tibbet here in this one. And I think they're uh, trying to say something a little bit there, trying to mock us a little bit. However, though, Elijah, explain a little bit because it's not like basketball. There's a kickball violation in basketball. Now, in volleyball, you are allowed to use your feet. To a degree, yes. Um, as long as it doesn't rest on the foot for more than a second, I believe is the rule, because then it's considered a lift. And there's no lift. You, uh, lifting is not allowed in volleyball. That's a violation. And doing that, of course, gives the other team the point. Um, if it's like a less than a second kind of thing, then sure, by all means. It's uh, not normal, but it happens from time to time. Now, Coach Tibbet took that timeout. Matty, what do you think he was telling his guys here in this one? Because you see Greg Scott. I mean, none of these guys are worried that they're down one right now. I mean, I think he probably told them to just be smart about where you put the ball. Maybe don't, if you don't get a very good set, then don't try to slam it down their throats. Just try to keep the ball in play so they can get the opportunity to get a good ball over the net so they can set it and they can't hit it. Like Matos that. right on cue, just exactly as you drew it up up here. Matos heard you, and he lays it down with the kill as Washington and Carter both come back into the game as Washington will serve. And I told him in class that I would say this on the air, and I'm going to have to. His first name is Nick. Does I told him that I would say that he has the best first name ever. Maybe a little bit of a bias there. Maybe, just a tad. <laughs> and he does get it over the net, though, and Goshen can't run it down as the scores table in a little bit of trouble over there as we're back at 24-23 now as the Lynx looking here for, again, the set number one if they can get the ace or maybe even a kill right here. Washington goes to the back row. Goshen trying to answer here. Rebe trying to basically tip it over. Good save dug out by Washington. Matos just going to have to send it back over the net. Here comes Goshen yet again, and they cannot get it to go, as that's going to do it here for the set number one as your Lynx winners. 25-23 so far. They're going to actually switch sides here in this one. I love about that. Only really one of the only sports to really kind of do that, switch benches and everything. I feel like that could kind of, be a little bit of a momentum shifter. Everybody kind of, you know, sometimes loves one side over the other. Maddie, did you have a preference on a, on a side? I mean, I always prefer the side that our team just started on just because that's the side that I've practiced on. It's what I'm more comfortable with. But at other gyms, sometimes it does make a difference because some one side light could be larger than the other and the back line could be larger than the other. So it really just depends. No, oh, I completely understand here in this one now. If you're Goshen College, you're switching to the other side. You're trying to look for some momentum after losing by two here in this first set. Yes, you have to win by two. So really, is it's kind of like by one there in this one. But what do you think he's telling his team right now to kind of come back in set number two? The same thing that Tippett told our players to just make smart decisions on where you put the ball. If the set's not there, don't slam it. And just to communicate and have a good team chemistry going on the court. Now, Elijah, we, we see the Lynx over here. They're dancing. They're having a blast out here in this one. What do you think Coach Tibbet or 
Alex Esparza here in this one. What do you think he's telling his guys right now here for set number two? You know, he's probably telling them just to keep up with the momentum, to really keep on swinging and to play aggressively like they have been. Ultimately, when they played volleyball their way, they started to move ahead, and that's what won them the first set. And let's take a look here at this all-tournament team that we've seen so far. We mentioned Charles Carter with the first team. Again, Dietrich Coleman, or D, as we call him, Mr. Coleman, second team. Again, Jonathan Vargas, who's no longer here with us. He was also part of that second team as well. But Ramon Matos and Brian Orenia, who are here tonight, both honorable mention in that and Maddie, you said you were there. Didn't really lose a whole lot of, of kids from that national championship team. Yeah, and it's really nice to come back with returning players. That way you have a trust that's already built with your teammates. And that way you guys already know how you work together, what works best, what doesn't work, and stuff like that. Again, Elijah now coming into set number two. How, do, how does Goshen really respond in your mind? We saw... Uh, Rava Jive really kind of set the tone with the kills here in this one. But it seems like after a while, started finding some of the, the blockers here for Lincoln. How does he get around that here in set number two? He's really just got to start swinging differently and responding to different blocks. He can't swing the same way every time. That's not going to work. Also, just for Goshen on the defensive side, they really need to get up to that net and really penetrate over with their arms. They're too far off the net and the hits are just going right off their hands and then onto their own side. And we're getting ready to start set number two here in this one. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. It will be, looks like the Lynx, I believe, should have the first crack at it here in this one. <laughs> As it's key line, Coleman, Matos, Oriana, Linder, Wesley, and Scott. I'm sorry, Coleman kind of going back to the bench here in this one. He was just he was trying to make my life a little bit more difficult out there by and just wanting to be out there with the extra guys. I love the enthusiasm here in this one. Watch out for him. But, again, Oriana is going to start here with this one. But really looking for Matos here, Elijah, in this second, or in this second set here to kind of really pick up the pace and kind of put down some kills. Yes, exactly. He's warmed up. He's had that whole first set to really get some swings in. Now he's in his own own kind of game you know he's playing exactly how he should be he does get it over here we'll see if the Lynx is going for the set going for Scott and Scott slams it home right there good kill from Greg Scott here in this one you can see Coleman and the rest of this bench pumped up here in this one one nothing lead here for the Lynx and a much better start to this second set Oriana one more time here in this one as he does send it back over, but Goshen trying to answer with a kill. Instead, Wesley and Linder were right there for the denial as it's 2-0 Lynx here so far in this one. And just by looking at some of the stats here over the weekend, I mean, really, it does look like this is a team to where if Matos really gets rolling, he can kind of start having himself a game here in this one. As that does get over, just going to have to send it back over. That was the fourth hit or the third hit. As he goes to Linder, he cannot get it. The save, though, by Goshen dug out as they just have to throw it back over the net. There's Wesley back to Linder yet again. Another dug out there by number 21, who's not on the roster, apparently. Only goes to 15 as Oriana goes back to Linder yet again, but this time the tip cannot go his way as it falls just outside of the line as it's 2-1 now here in favor of, again, your Lynx. But however, though, what I was saying, though, about Matos had eight, only five kills in the first game against Aquinas. And then I know they were ranked eighth in the country, so a good solid team there. And they did say that they, that, that was a team that really kind of outplayed them here in this one. As Scott, I believe, touched the net there in this one. We'll have an uh, official ruling here in just a second. Elijah, what did you see here? To me, it actually looked like uh, off the other team's block, it actually touched the antenna. So that call was kind of questionable for me. I think the Lynx should have retained that point. 2-2 two, two is our score here. Rodriguez set the serve yeah. to Linder. He's just going to have to get back over the net. Scott sets it right back over. I think Oriana wanted him to set it up there. Rava BJ, or Rava Jive tries to go to key line. Matos from the back row back over. Yet again, Rabajive to Oriana, and this time 
The feet's not going to work as it's 3-2 now. Goshen out in front. Yeah, um, the Lynx have really got to get together and communicate better with their passing and blocking even to kind of stop this now before Goshen gets on a roll here. Rodriguez sends it over. And Wesley denied, though, at the net. One more time. Greg Scott will not be denied. He gets the kill right there. And we're tied back up at three apiece here in this one. Now, Elijah, talk to me a little bit about the pace. You really have to, like, strategize every serve, every point. What goes into the thought process here as a men's college volleyball player? Before you get to that, that one, they do say, I believe that was out. Interesting call here in this one as it gives the point to the Lynx. I don't know if you're Goshen. I don't, I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, I, I wasn't able to see, but it didn't look like it touched the Lynx block. And it may have been on the line there. Scott trying to go for the kill, though. Saved, dug out, I should say, by this Goshen team. But Matos across the court, no. Rodriguez was there. Rabajive. Almost blocked at the net, but it falls just on the Lynx side of it. So it will be awarded to Goshen here. As, again, some more substitutions. Looks like it will be, if I can find my roster here, Bennett for Sodder here in this one. As, again, number 21 set to serve. It seems weird that I keep saying 21, but again, not on the roster. But Wesley, he's right there, gets the kill. He's all fired up. Now he's going to go to serve here in this one. And it, it almost seems like this, it really starts with this front row here for the Lynx. Yes, I, I would agree with that. As, um, as I mentioned earlier, it seems like Wesley always just comes in to kind of get them the point they need to start their own momentum back up again. And could not get that one back over the net. 6-4 now in favor of the Lynx here. And this one, Wesley set to serve one more time. Trying to go towards the back. Rabajive is there. Coleman, and it looked like Wall was there, but he was a brick wall and denies Coleman right there as Wesley checks back out. Here comes Key Lion into the game as Goshen and Wall set to serve. Again, Michael Wall, six foot sophomore, out of Ohio, goes to Matos. Oriana sets it up for Scott, denied though at the net by Goshen, let's try it one more time with Scott. Still kind of tipped it there, but on their side, they're gonna go for the kill right here. Rabajive, no. Keyline with the dig. Oriana to Matos, no. One more time, Rabajive. Oriana with a nice set there to Keyline, over to Matos, who just kind of miss hits it just a little bit. Now, Matty, how, how was that? Was that, a, again, was that just a little bit of a miss hit right there in this one? Or what, what did you see? I personally thought that the set was just a tad bit low, and sometimes when the sets are low, it forces the players to readjust their arm swing, and sometimes it just does not go over the net like you just saw. Well, you just saw him kind of make up for his mistake right there, kind of put it down with some authority as he was not pleased there. 7-6 lead here for the Lynx. And one thing I want to look at, though, here for Matos is I'm learning all these I think it's, it's great being my first time broadcasting volleyball. I get to learn something new here in this one as Washington sends it over and, you know, with the kill percentages and stuff and how the kills minus errors divided by whatever gets you, you know, your attack percentage or whatnot, how you could easily have a great game, but if you make little bit mistakes like that, just one here and there, it could really hurt your, your average and, and your percentage. Yeah, it's something that us hitters take pride in, our hitting percentage, because... I mean, little mistakes really do have a big effect on your hitting percentage because if you have more attempts and you have the same amount of, like, if you have more errors than you do kills, it really messes with it, and then it just makes you feel like you did not play that great. And an ace there for Washington. Make it one more as he gets back-to-back. -back. Ace is here in this one. He's going to try to go here for it for one more time as I would tell you how many he has but we got a lot of different uh, same players names on all these stat sheets so really tough to read here in this one as we have a timeout we're going to go to break we'll be right back here in 30 seconds more here on LCTV.
back here in the Jack D. Nutt Arena with the SpongeBob Campfire song in the background. Maddie, you were up here singing. Don't try to deny it up here. Again, you can just see that's how loose this men's team plays right here. Yeah, I mean, the more fun that you have, the better you play. And if you're having fun, you're doing great. And they're doing great right now. Washington with a set there to Charles Carter as he throws it down. Another point here for the Lynx as they are on a roll here in this one as it's 11-6 now in favor of the Lynx. And one more time, Washington kind of bit on a roll here serving. But right as I say it, there's the jinx that I was telling you about earlier as he hits it right into the net and puts it, makes it 11-7. Now, Elijah, you've been to some of these broadcasts basketball games you've seen me do it a time or two here in this one I hope that that's not a sign of things to come no I don't I don't think it is really a sign of you know bad luck I think that he's just an aggressive server and normally when you're an aggressive server you're gonna have more errors it just happens uh, of course you're also gonna get more points that way as well so it just you would give and take it there and just out says the the Lions judge there in this one. Maddie, did you, did you agree? I honestly was not looking. Either way, they're going to get the point right back here after that. Make it 11-8 now. It should be, at least it should be 12-8, I believe. However, though, because it was 11-6. However, though, they just got a point. At least I'm not the official scorer. You can't get mad at me if they didn't put it up there. As Matos sent it to the back row. Laura set by Washington as Linder now with it. Saved, dug out, denied though at the net by it looks like Carter and Coleman. They're going to try one more time. Robert Jive, good dig there by Keyline as Washington just going to send it over. They're going to regroup here on the defensive side of things. A little tip over the net. No, saved. Here's Washington back to Lindors. This time tried to do the same thing was Matos, but this time it came back the other way and nobody was there for the help as, again, you can see Jim Daughtry. And again, Alexa Magnuson, both the head coach and assistant coach here for Goshen College. They lead it 12-9 as Bendit sends it over. What a set there by Washington and Carter trying to get a little bit of fancy there here in this one, but again, just didn't work out. Elijah, what did you see? Do you like, if, do you think Coach Mark Tibbet, first off, liked what he just yeah, saw there? Absolutely not. Um, that was just a late reaction to the pass and to the set ultimately and sloppy footwork. Um, that's not what you want to see with a hitter. <laughs> and they initially, I initially thought that one was going to be a little bit long, but they do say it was chipped just enough as somebody got a finger on it. It gives the point back to the Lynx. So now Key Lion will serve. Lynx lead by three, and that one just long says the Lions judge back there. So now Goshen set to serve here in this one, but again, you gotta like the little bit of a run there that Washington kind of put here for this Lynx team. Goshen now will put it back over the net to Mato, set there from Washington to Carter, and a big hole right in the middle as he finds it, and he sets down the kill right there, Scott and Oriana. Coming back in, and you can see Matos starting to heat up here. Got to get fired up when your player hits a ball like that, and it's wide open. There was nobody there. It's beautiful. Elijah, what, what did you see there from Matos? I mean, you, you know, you can't really ask for a better opportunity as a hitter, you know, you're, when, you're, when you're wide open like that. And, it's, of course, it's exciting. You, you're going to celebrate and just enjoy your point, especially when you have a lead over the other team. And now we see a double hit there here in this one. And not only the Lynx, but maybe some of the women's 
volleyball players along some of your teammates, Maddie, they're going to let go should know that that's a no-no. Yes, they are. We do not accept double contacts when you set at all, ever. You heard it right there first from the volleyball player herself as Goshen find the zone and they lay it down right there for the kill. 15-12 lead for the Lynx. Again, here we're going to go to replay here one more time of that last one. And you see Charles just kind of throw it right in the middle where nobody was standing right there. And again, got a lot of elevation over the net. I wish I could jump that high. Me too. And Rodriguez throws it over the net here. Oriana set to serve. He goes to Scott. And he goes right through the brick wall set by Goshen. And he finds the bottom of the hardwood as that's a kill for Mr. Scott as it's back to a four-point lead here for the Lynx. Uh, the Goshen coach there is probably going to want to talk to their blockers up there as well. They're not really moving in close enough to have an effective block, allowing hits like that to go straight through. As Matos yet again almost got another one there, but somehow it was saved by Goshen. Here, Scott, this go around. Once again, dug out there by Geeman as Rabajive goes to the back left corner, but just a tad too far as it's now a five-point lead here for the Lynx. And so far, one, again, if you're just tuning in here in this one, Matty Geese, Elijah Cox, Nick Jackson with you here on the broadcast here for all these men's home games. That one's blocked at the net as your Lynx lead by five so far. Make it now six as Robert Jive just sends that one a tad too long. 18-12 now here in this one. And I think if you're Jim Daughtry here, Matty, you might want to start calling a timeout here. I mean, if your players are not responding the way that you want them to, of course, it's a good idea to call a timeout. But after that hit that they just had, I don't think the coach will be calling a timeout. And Rob Ajive still doing his part in front of the net. I'm, we could get a stat sheet here sometime soon. I'm sure he's going to have quite a bit of kills here for Goshen College. It seems like he's the only one so far to really kind of step things up here for Goshen. They do get the serve over, though, however. Linder there. Matos, though, won't be denied yet again as he puts that one down. 19-13 here in favor of the Lynx yet again. And you kind of see Coleman starting to come back in. I think Coach Tibbet doesn't want this game to get any closer. Just kick Co or Goshen out of this game right now. Yeah, it's really nice to have a big lead like this because there is some leeway, but you don't want to have too much because... If you give too much, then the other team's going to gain that momentum and they're going to get more and more energy and they're going to come back and wipe you, wipe the floor with you. And they, that one dropped down just in front of the net for the Lynx. So 19-14. Here comes Rod, or I'm sorry, looks like Wall set to serve that one as Oriana goes to Scott, but he's denied, though, by, again, by Goshen, and I, I thought they said it, they were trying to give themselves the, the point because they thought it was tipped, even though the official said it was your, your point anyway. Uh, to, yeah, to me, it looks like that, that block, that was just stuffed right down. I didn't see, it looked like some of the players on the bench's faces were saying that was a questionable call, but from here, I didn't see anything to warrant that expression. Key line to Oriana, but again, it looks like that. It's a double hit there for Oriana. That's, a, once again, a no-no, but Goshen College not going to let him know about it. So we'll see if maybe he can't possibly. I don't think he'll get away with it here in the rest of the game, but you never know sometimes. And that one right into the net from, for Wall as service error there. 2016 in favor of the Lynx. Here comes Nick Washington and Charles Carter back into the game as Washington set to serve. Again, so far, I'd, I'd have to say, you know, with Washington being back there, Matty, you can kind of attest to this here. He kind of provided a little bit of a spark when he was serving there. Does that kind of build a little bit of confidence when you're out on the floor with him like that? It definitely does because if you know that your player is confident, it makes you feel confident and everybody else around you feel confident. So having such an aggressive server like Nick, it's really nice to have it. So that way energy gets fueled through the rest of the team. And that one just a little long there from Washington. Make it 2017 now as Robert Jive set to, to serve. He goes to key line, set there from Washington to Carter, and he just throws it down right in front of that brick wall for Goshen. And it does drop on their side, 21-17 now. Again, 
Talk to me a little bit here, Elijah, about the blocks. There, you can still get a hand on it, but it may not necessarily go your way. Exactly, and what the, the problem is with the Goshen block is they're really not penetrating over the net. So it's allowing the ball to fall right in front of them and not actually falling back onto the link side. They really need to penetrate the net and stick together as well to have an effective block. 21-18, Maddie, you shook your head at that. You agreed as well? Yeah, if you are not pressing your hands, as some people would say, the ball is just going to come right in between you or it's just going to hit right off the top and it's just going to fly back. As that one double hit there yet again by the Lynx team. So kind of some little bit unforced errors here in this one down the stretch to kind of let Goshen crawl their way back into this. Still a 21-19 lead. And again, we mentioned you do have to win by two as Charles Carter just a little bit long as well. Or they're going to say that one. There we go. They, they changed the, the score on me there. They put it 22 instead of 21. It is 21-20 now here in favor of the Lynx. But again, Goshen back within one. Washington set to Coleman. And now we're tied here at 21 as all of a sudden what a was a 20-16 to 16 or run here for this Lynx squad. They now have to call a timeout here by Coach Mark Tibbet just to talk things over here in this one. Now, Maddie, we're going to stay right here. But what do you think during this timeout, being a part of volleyball like this, when you see a team kind of go on a run like this late in, the, in a set and kind of tie this ball game back up, how do you respond coming back out of this? You just have to hit harder, pass better, set better. You have to do everything in your power to play better. I mean, when a team comes back from a gap, I would say, score gap like this, it's a little bit intimidating because they are on a roll. They do have that momentum that they are carrying with them. And again, it is very intimidating, but our players are smart. They know what they're doing. They are national champions. They will find a way around this and pull out a win. And Elijah, your thoughts here coming out of the timeout? Uh, my thoughts are that Goshen has really, you know, stepped up with their offense. They're swinging harder and they're blocking more effectively. That last point, that was a triple block. There were three people. There was no getting past that block. Um, it's best to look for ways around that other than swinging right into the block. 21-21 now. Again, Goshen set to serve a little bit of a run here for the boys in purple as that one hits the front of the net but does get over somehow as Matos just having to set it to Charles Carter but it was tipped right at the net as he couldn't get his whole swing on that one as Linder kind of put a dent in the wall there as he does send it back over set from Washington to Carter and he'll throw it down with some authority as I believe he just jumps basically halfway over the net and kind of helps him out big time here in this one. 22-21 now here in favor of the Lynx as now Daughtry wants to call a timeout and once again the Lynx let them know here in this one we're going to take a quick break we'll be back in 30 seconds 22 21 lead here for the Lynx in this one well I guess we're going to go to a, a replay instead of a break as Carter just throws that one down here but again now we're going to go to a break 22 21 we'll be back in 30 seconds here on LCTV meet the scan a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SaveByTheScan.org. We're back here in the Jack D. Nutt Arena, where again, the Lynx coming out of the timeout. They did get the last point, so Key Lions set to serve here. But how can the Lynx kind of get on a roll here and kind of get the last, grab these last couple, or I should say the last three remaining points? I think they just need to serve aggressively, um, continue running their offense like they have been, and really work on the block there up at the net as well. And that set there was kind of miscommunication there by Goshen as Charles Carter sends it just a little, or they're going to say it was actually on Goshen College. Again, Maddie, explain to me here kind of what just happened. I guess a player might have touched the ball. That's what I'm assuming. I thought that it was out, but I guess it wasn't. 
I didn't know. I didn't exactly. I thought it was out as well. This time, they do hit the net. And this one was more obvious, so that does yes. give the point to the Lynx. So set point, or should I say match point here in this one, 24-21. Lynx looking to take set number two. Did take the first one. See if they can't get the second one there. Washington and Keyline almost run into each other as Washington's just going to have to set it over. And I don't think he should have been the one to do that. I think Matos was in a good position there. What did you guys see on that last play? Just a little bit of some miscommunication. Yeah. They weren't talking to each other, and that forced Nick to kind of windmill it over. And just a tad long, the Washington. 24-22 still set point here for the Lynx. Washington to Wesley trying to go back corner, but just to the right of where it intersects. And they cannot get it, the job done yet again this go around. Now all of a sudden, Goshen back within one, 24-23 here in this one as Geeman will serve. It goes to Matos, Washington to Linder. It was dug out, nearby Goshen. Ramajive is there and he'll find the back of the corner. And we're all tied at 24 yet again. So kind of some runs as of late here by Goshen College are trying to take set number two as we're tied here at 24. Geeman a little long on the serve as call that one a service, a service air right there. 25-24, here comes Scott, a big hitter here for the Lynx. And Oriana in the serve, also a, a decent setter here for this Lynx team. Maddie, any thoughts on Brian Oriana? He has such beautiful hands. He can place the ball pretty much wherever he wants to, and it's really a good thing for your hitters too to have such a great setter like that because you have confidence in him and you know that no matter where he is on the court, he will get the ball to you in the right spot. Another kill there from Goshen College to make it tied up yet again at 25. This time it will be Rodriguez to serve. See. The Lynx just need to kind of get something going here in this one. And that's kind of the break that they needed right there as he hits the net. And it drops 26-25 as he couldn't get it over. Lynx looking for set, set point here in this one. You can see Daughtry not happy here in this one. And Jack Linder, right before we switched it back, kind of the ball kind of caught him in, in the face there just a little bit on the bounce from one of the Lady Lynx over there. But they do get the job done right there, a block. And that will do it finally. Here for the Lynx in set number two. They win it 27-25. Here just a couple, a little bit of it, a little extra. But however, though, we'll, let's see that last hit. Blocked at the net nicely there from Scott and Wesley just to send it into no man's land for Goshen as they once again lose set number two. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, though, the Lynx taking trying to look for taking the third and final set and winning here on Banner Night. They talked about going, sweeping 3-0. We'll see if they can do it in here in set number three. They win set number two. They lead it 2-0 here so far. We'll be back right after this on LCTV. I'm a dual major at Lincoln College. I'm president of student activities. I sing alto in the choir. I'm a dual sport athlete. I became a leader. I found a mentor. I found a community. I, I found, found my future, future at Lincoln College. dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> Meet the scan. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you! But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. 
Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Back here in the Jack D. Nutt Arena, where again, Lynx took set number two, 27 to 25. Here in this one, took the first set as well, 25 23. Looking for the third and final set to kind of wrap this one up here against Goshen in this one. It will be Rodriguez and Goshen set to serve here for this one as Coleman about threw it down with authority, but Rodriguez says otherwise. But however, Robert Jive denied though. I believe that was Carter who might have got a hand on it as it's going to be one nothing yet again here in favor of the Lynx so far. Again, Elijah, knowing that you've won two sets already, looking for that third and final match win or set win, what do you think is rolling through this team's mind right now here on Banner Night? They're probably just thinking, you know, we just got to keep doing our thing. We're communicating well, we're hitting well and we're receiving the serves well. If we just keep this up, we've got this one in the bag. They're confident at this point, and they're on a roll. Is that one blocked at the net yet again? Goshen will keep it alive, though, however. And then Robert Jive will send that one down as well here in this one for the kill. 1-1 one, one is our score. I mean, we'll wait for Maddie here in a quick second. However, though, it will be number 21 yet again here to serve. As Matos, Washington, now Carter. And you already know Carter's going to throw it down with authority as well. Also kind of a little bit of a whip action there coming back after he got the kill. 2-1 now here. Good guys of Lincoln College. Oriana now set to serve. And we talked about he had a, quite a few assists. And he loves to kind of set the ball very well as Again, Matty mentioned earlier as Robert Jive goes right to Oriana. He does kind of save it as Linder now key line trying to go over the bench. And I believe he might have had an opportunity if he if if Linder wasn't there. But it does give the point through to Goshen. Make it 2-2. And now it looks like Wall set to serve. Here in this one. Just barely kind of floating it over was Wall, but instead Scott right at the net denied, though. I believe that might have been Bennett and Laura. So that'll make it 3 2. Here, still in favor of the Lynx as that one went out of bounds. Linder right smack dab in the middle as once again blocked at the net. Thereby, looked like Scott might have got a hand on it as. Already 4-2, Lynx looking good here, Elijah, so far here in set number three. Yeah, they're playing a strong defensive game, and they've got strong servers too. So all around right now, they're just running the court. And you see Coach Tibbet right there. He's loving every bit of the action here in this one. 5-2 here in this one. And again, he's the, the head coach. He does finally got a banner here up. I actually thought they would have put it right smack dab in the middle of both of those two banners. However, they put it off to the side, kind of their own. Hey, no worries. As that point awarded to the Lynx right here in this one, 6-2 now in favor of Lincoln. Out in front early in it, I believe it all starts with Coleman and Scott as we are going to take a timeout here in this one. As I believe while we're away, or while we're at this little bit of a break here in this one, let's talk about what went on over the weekend 
here for Lincoln College. They went to the Judson Invitational up there. They had a couple matches. First one not going their way as Lawrence Technical University kind of kind of got the things rolling here in this one. Lost all three sets in that one, then followed by Aquinas. They were ranked eighth in the country. Then Siena Heights lost both of those in three and four sets, but then did pick up the win against Judson here in this one. But now let's send it down to Maddie Geese here on the floor. We are here at the men's volleyball game. It is an exciting game tonight. The Lynx are doing so good against Goshen College. Um, we're hitting really well, we're blocking very well, we're having some aggressive serves, we're closing the block, and Goshen is just coming right back at it with us. Back to you guys. And thank you, Maddie, for those wise words here. And this one, 6-2 lead here for the Lynx coming out of the timeout. And again, credit Maddie Geese down there doing a great job doing the reporting for us here. Again, you could tell first broadcast trying to get a little nervous here in this one, but hey, we all were at one point. Yeah, exactly. It reminds me of my first time on the radio. This is obviously a lot different, but same kind of concept, nervousness. She did a great job there as Goshen trying to send it back over the net. It is going to be set there from wall to Raba G Raba G And I believe we're going to be awarded. Goshen will be awarded the point here on the double hit by Scott. Again, didn't quite see much there in this one. You can see the bench a little bit frustrated about that call. Elijah, what did you see? To me, it, it looked like he set the ball up, and it, it just, when you're a setter, sometimes you've got to be a good actor to be able to hide the fact and make it look like you're contacting the ball with both hands at the same time, and I just didn't see that there. A little long there from Rabajibay as it'll award the Lynx okay, the point on the service air. 7-3 now in favor. Here comes Wesley now to serve. Rodriguez trying to go for the kill, but denied, though, by Coleman as he sends it right back from where it came as it's 8-3 now. Again, we saw the Lynx, they got off to a very fast start for in the set number two. However, though, a little trouble closing it out down the stretch as Lora was denied, though, at the net save by Goshen. Just going to have to send it back over as, again, Rabajive cannot jump from behind the line. Scott trying to do the same thing. Here comes Bennett. And Bennett will send it down, give the point in the kill there to Goshen as it's 8-4. Here comes Sauter back into the game as well. But again, we saw the Lynx kind of have a little bit of trouble closing that game out down the stretch. Elijah, what were your thoughts there on that last set? I think on the last set it was just a lot of unforced errors. And any time that you see a lot of those errors, those are points you're just giving away to the other team. And that allows them to be able to develop a lead but luckily we were able to gain the momentum back and turn things in our favor. And kind of sometimes, like you said, you give the points away as Coleman sends that one just a little bit long here in that one. But those are easy corrections to make though, unlike kind of some of those where maybe you're miss hitting it just a little bit. Those unforced errors kind of, I know they, they're more frustrating however, but yet easier to kind of maybe possibly get over as a team. Exactly. It, Rodriguez now right past Linder as he cannot come up with that one. 8-7 now. All of a sudden, Goshen on a little bit of a roll here in this one. As you can see, Mark Tibbet looking a little bit concerned with his group here right now as Linder to Oriana. Matos trying to throw it down, but denied, though, by Laura. And he kind of lets Matos know just a little bit. And now... And Mark Tibbet going to take a timeout here in this one. Let's get back to that Judson University or the Judson Invitational here in this one. We were talking about it just a little bit here as, again, we mentioned that Lawrence Tech lost all three sets a little bit there. And that one didn't really play too particularly well. Only 30 kills, 22 errors in that contest. And you can see, like you mentioned earlier, Lynx really just kind of beat themselves here in this one as, again, 17 of the 22 came in the first two sets, only five in the second, so or in the third. So you got to like how they're clearing things up just a little bit in that ball game. But however, though, the one thing I do want to point out, though, they lost the first set 26-24, but they were leading 21-16. And all of a sudden, Lawrence Tech went on an 8-2 run there. At the end of the game, we saw it earlier here tonight, where the end of the games, 
can't really kind of close thing, close the door on opponents, and that's something a good team like Goshen, you saw with Lawrence Tech, they'll come back and they'll make you pay in the next set. Exactly. And a lot of that we're also seeing is, uh, like you said, errors. And when you're in a game where you're, you know, you're ahead at one point, but once you start making errors, it's so easy to get behind. And also playing the Aquinas, they're ranked eighth in the country. As we mentioned, lost all three sets there. But again, they did play really well in that game. It's particularly Coleman, who had four kills, one error on seven attacks. As I believe Matos got that one right there. He had a 429 attack percentage in that contest. So again, he was really stepped up in that contest. But we'll get to the last game against Judson when they won in just a few seconds as Washington set to serve here for the Lynx as they lead 9-8. But I do want to go to that Judson game, though, just because they won in the fifth set. However, as Washington going to serve, here comes Rodriguez right through the hands of Washington, and it will be a kill there for Goshen as they were tied at 9. But again, if you're looking at that fifth, I want to just start out because they lost the first set 25-21 against Judson. Then they won 25-17. Then they lost set three, 29-27, with a couple of errors in that game. But I really, really wanted to go to that last contest in that one because they really, they really set the tone in that game just because of the fact that they hit, they had 16 of the, 15, or 14 of the 15 points in the fifth set were kills in that one. So you can see they only had one error, didn't make a lot of mistakes in that fifth set, and they took charge as they took charge right there hitting the net or tied back up at 10. But Elijah, again, just looking at some of the stats here, what really kind of just stands out to you? I mean, a lot of times when we're going back and forth between sets, you know, you have one team winning the first and then the next team. That has to do with the coaching that's happening in between sets and the adjustments that are being made by players. Hang on, as the, the ball actually got stuck in the net, I don't think I've ever really seen that here in this one and maybe possibly see a replay of the of the ball actually getting stuck in the net. I don't know if we have a camera shot of it, but we'll see maybe possibly here in a few seconds as that one was served from Keyline to Ravajiva as Keyline saves it yet again, drops it just in front of the line right there, maybe even on it. Let's see the replay one more time. No, maybe. You can see the, the bench loves it though. However, as Keyline yet again, who got the kill right there, he's going to go one more time now to trying to dig that one out. He could not, as that one will drop for Goshen. 12-11 now here in this one. But it really kind of seems like with this Lynx team, great offensively. However, I know it's still early, only 3-3 three and three on the season. But right now, being able to close out games, we're starting to get to that about the halfway point right here in this one. You see Carter throwing it down with authority right there. They're going to have to continue that here in the third set to close the door on Goshen. Exactly. They're going to have to keep this aggressive pattern as well as playing defense as well as they have been. Just keeping things consistent is what seems to be working for them the most. Carter and Washington check out of the game. Here I believe Wesley and Oriana comes in as Bennett sends that one right to Matos. Good dig there from him. Scott just going to have to send that one over here in this one as Bennett throws down the kill right there. Make it 13-12 now in favor of the, or still in favor of the Lynx here in this one as I believe Wall gonna go to the back row to serve here in this one. And right to Matos, Oriana will set it to Scott who ends up right at Ravajibe, but however, he sends it back over the net. Same with Matos and Rodriguez with a little bit of a bobble there, and it drops for Matos. 14-12 now in favor of the Lynx here in this one, and you can see the bench really loving it, but really Alec Esparza loving it more, even the assistant coach here for the Lynx. Oh, yeah, and you know, that last play was really smart there. We don't always have to go aggressive at the net. Sometimes a soft set over the net confuses the other team just as much as a hard hit ball. And Laura, just a little bit of a miss hit right there as he sends it right into the net. 15-12 is our score now in favor of the Lynx. Lindor set to serve. As Rabajive right to Keyline, 
He'll dig it out. Matos now with it, but they're going to have a award the point to Goshen College due to the, the double hit here in this one. That one was awfully close. However, though, awarded to Goshen. They now trail by just two as Ramajive set to serve. As he does get it over there. Oriana is going to have to run that one down. Matos blocked at the net, though. Dug out by Goshen. Here comes Rabajive. Just trying to tip it over, and Keyline doing his best to save it as much as he can, but again, just not quick enough. The hair too late, and now the Goshen back within one. Um, it, it can be hard, too, for that libero to be able to read these plays. You know, so often the libero is seen to dig up these hard hit balls, and so when something's just tipped over like that, it's kind of a last minute dive to get to the ball. And, Key Lion just wasn't able to get there in time. 15-14 our score. And Raba Jive one more time. Set to serve again. I finally found that fifth set. They won that fifth set over Judson. Again, 14 kills, one air on 16 attacks in that. Again, fifth and final set. They won 15-13. 8-12 attack percentage in that one. And by far the best so far this season in a set for this Lynx squad. And hopefully that was their last match. So, so far they've carried it some momentum into this contest as they get another point right there hitting the net was Rabajive and now Wesley set to serve. Yeah, and like you said, that, that percentage is amazing. Anytime you see something over 600, I would say, it, you're, you're seeing a, a good um, hit to attempt ratio there. Uh, Again, Oriana did not touch that, says the official, and that rules it in favor of the Lynx. That one was just long there from Goshen. 17-14 now, Rodriguez right in front of Oriana, and he does agree with the call right there. They do say it was just inside the line. Now, Elijah, talk to us a little bit. It can also hit the line, too, and still count. Yes, if any part of the ball hits the line, it's considered in. Um, as we know, with a hard-hit ball, the ball tends to flatten out. Um, which, you know, increases the area that can actually possibly touch the line, which is why challenges are sometimes called because they're so close you just can't tell the difference. And the bench loving it there from Matos in this contest. 18-15 now still in favor of the Lynx. And, and Matos, he had a good, good weekend as well. He was actually named to the Judson Invite All-Tournament team it, over the weekend with some of big performances by him. As he does send that one just a tad bit long there, 18, 16 still, though always a positive when you get named, honored, something like that. Oh, absolutely, and you can see you can see why his performance in this game has been absolutely stellar. And that one right there over the net for Goshen, but Matos cannot get it back across as Goshen will be awarded the point right there, 18, 17 now in favor of Still of the Lynx here in this one, as I believe this time around it is going to be Geeman with another serve. As Carter goes up with authority and comes down with even more as he just throws it down right there. Good kill one more time and maybe possibly see a replay of that last one here in this one as he threw it down hard. And his vertical leap on that is just outstanding. That's so... As Matos, they're going to say it was just out. Matos cannot, uh, he does not agree here in this one. Let's see this replay one more time of Charles, though, I believe. And Elijah talked about you could, how high he got right there. You see about half of his body over the net. As again, unfortunately, our cameras are on this side. Otherwise, we would, otherwise we would go to replay of that last one and see if it was in or not. But they do award it to Goshen as Linder... Got it across, but it's saved, though. I believe that was Wall who dug it out as Rabajibe once again denied, though. Linder just trying to tip it back over. Saved again by Wall. Just sent back over the net. Goes Goshen as I, that was Washington to try to set it to Carter, though. But he was blocked at the net, though. Elijah, what did you see there in that last couple possessions? Both teams fighting hard. Absolutely. And we're, what we're seeing now is just the, the center is not able to get to the ball and to a manner to where they can set the ball well enough for the hitter to be able to maneuver into a proper hitting position. So we're seeing lower hits. 
Walt with a good dig right there. Matos with the dig as well. Here comes Charles trying to send it back over, but he's going to be blocked at the net there by Rabajibe and Bennett, or I'm sorry, Sauter here for Goshen. As all of a sudden, now Goshen with the late lead, 20 to 19. And Rodriguez set to serve. Going right to Matos. Having a little issue with it there, but Washington right back at Rodriguez with Carter, but it was dug out as Wall just gonna have to send it back over. Same with Matos, and it was interesting choice here. I did not see if it hit the line or not. They say it was just off to the, the right of it. All of a sudden, 21-19 now here in favor of Goshen College, and I believe Bud went somewhere here in this one. I was gonna try to throw it down to Maddie down there, but I think he's having a quick word with her. 21-19, though, is our score here in this one. Now, you saw the timeout taken here by Coach Tibbet. Now, Elijah, talk to me a little bit. Here, we, we talked about this just about five minutes ago on these late runs by the opposing team. How can they stop those? A lot of times it's just making small adjustments here or there. We're seeing that the setter is able to effectively set to the hitters, um, maybe trying a different setting pattern would be advantageous to the links at this time. Again, now we're gonna send it down to Maddie here on the floor one more time, 21-19. Go ahead. Was the Everybody's playing really hard and aggressive. They're swinging hard. They're passing very well. There's very strong blocks on the court right now. Everybody's playing it really smart. They're being smart about where they put the ball with the tips, the roll shots, even their serves. Their placement is really, really well right now. And thank you, Maddie, right there. 21-19 lead here for Goshen as Rodriguez once again set to serve. Goes to key line, set by Washington to Coleman. No, I believe that was dug out, though, by Rodriguez. He looked a little shaken up on the play after that as that one drops out and awarded to the Lynx. And I must say, he got that, he's got that, that right thumb area taped up just a little bit. Did that maybe affect him here? You saw the same facial expression I did. I'm, I'm sure it did. It looked like that ball was hit hard. There was no doubt about that. Um, receiving that on potentially maybe injured hand already definitely would cause some pain there. And, an inefficient pass. Rabajive knocks down the kill right there. 22-20 now in favor of Goshen still. In a late surge by them as Washington set to Carter and just a tad too long. They're going to actually say it might have been tipped before it went out as that one is going to be awarded to the Lynx as Scott and Oriana come back into this contest as, he, again, he will serve and we've seen Kind of him and Washington really done well, not only serving, but setting as well here tonight. Oh, I agree. Uh, at the term in volleyball, they say their hands are like butter. Everything comes off smooth, and you can definitely see that here. Um, I think we're finally out of that rotation where the setter's having a hard time setting to their hitters. Well, the kill right there from Goshen. Back to a two-point lead for them, as now I believe Wall set to serve. He goes to key line, as there it is, Oriana right to Wesley, and you mentioned the hands just like butter right there. Perfect example, and it was right on cue, 23-22 now as the Lynx back within one here in this one. Linder now with it, just gonna send it back over the net rather carefully. Tip there by Bennett, but Matos with the secondary tip, and all of a sudden we're tied at 23 here in this one. Maybe let's see the, a replay here of this last one. Well, maybe not. Now we have, don't have a replay. I was just told I had one, and then, uh, then we don't. So 23-23 as we have now a timeout taken by Goshen College. Let's talk a little bit more about what happened over the weekend. We, we've talked about Matos, talked about Coleman, Carter also as well in there. But again, really, the kind of the key factor for me, if I look at everybody through each game here in this one, the one person that really kind of stands out to me the most is Greg Scott. I mean, the first in the first game, I believe, if I can find it here somewhere, he did actually have six kills, five errors, but 17 total attacks, 
not a great percentage there, but it seemed like that was the way that it went for the Lynx that day. A lot of them didn't have a percentage hardly at all, and I'm just like, you know, me being new, looking at some of these stats, I'm going, oh, maybe is this, this good? Is this bad? I mean, you talked about it earlier, 600 was kind of an at attacking percentage that was pretty solid. What do you think's a good percentage here tonight? Um, right now, I think we're just looking at we're, we're just winning over 500 here. To, to, it's the first game at home. Uh, we're pumped up. It's, you know, the pen at night. Um. And good dig there. Matos coming back the other way. And it does hit just inside the line here in this one. 24-23 in favor of the Lynx as they are now at set point. They get this one right here. This ball game will be over. They've already won the first two, 25-23. Won the second set, 29-27. Looking to win this one, 25-23 as well. But Goshen College says they want to play at least one more point, a couple more points here in this one as they tie it up at 24 on the kill right there. And Robert Bay now set the serve here. Again, Elijah, you know this is you know the third, third match. You, the Lynx have kind of been on the momentum here. You know you just had to get that one point. How do you, get, how do, you do anything possible to get that point? It's really just, you know, playing the game how you have been, being consistent. Right now, the other team is going to do everything they can to kind of creep up and get the set to force another set. And right now, it's just about being on your best defense and offense and just being an all-around balanced team. 25-24 now as Goshen retakes the lead right here in this one as, again, here goes Robert Jive one more time. He's by far one of their best servers so far. And well, we're going to play one more there as Rodriguez sends it down right there for the third set ending 26 24 final here in set number three. As again, the Lynx could not close that last one out. Had their opportunities here in this one. However, though, just couldn't close the door. Elijah, why do you think that is? They uh, were, those last few points were hard served. Um, it's, you know, we saw an overpass by Key Lion, the libero there. And ultimately that led to a point there for the other team and just bad serve received at that point. Caused yeah. us to go into the nether set. And Goshen does win that set, 26-24. Let's see a replay right here in this one. It is the last, last one. As you can see, this is the final point right there. You see Rodriguez. I mean, just nothing really the Lynx could do there or in an out of position trying everything he can to, to save it. But when he's throwing it down right over the top of you like that, how hard is it yeah. to actually get the ball back up? It is. And then and then when you're already down, it it's nearly impossible. But once that overpass is tapped back down, there's really no way of receiving that. And 26-24 was the final there in set number three, making us kind of play four here in this one. Now, you can see Tibbet trying to give some final instructions here for the Lynx, as same with Coach Daughtry as well. He's talking with his team here in this one. What do you, do you think Daughtry's telling his team right now? Lost the first two, but you battled hard and came back, and you actually took set three to force set four. I think he's really going to tell them to keep up on their momentum. At this point, it's when you start to get tired, but he's going to want to pump them up and keep that energy going in his team so that they can play the set, potentially win the set in force five. Couldn't agree with you more here in this one as, again, we're just waiting here for set number four to kick off in this contest as well. But, and let's take a look at the, at the Cena Heights game here in this one. They came in seven and two. That was the third game of that Judson Invitational here in this one. They lost actually in four sets. Played fairly well. They did actually win the first set. Leading the way was Matos, or I'm sorry, Carter in that ball game with 15 kills at four errors and 31 attacks. Hitting a, a 355 percentage here in this one as now let's send it back down to Maddie for one more time right here before set four. What is up 
you guys. We are here at the men's volleyball game. Right now, we just lost our very first set of the evening. It is a heartbreaker, but I know that our team will get back in it and show Goshen who's the real big dog here. Back to you guys. And thank you, Maddie. As again, Elijah, I know you and her both first time broadcasters here. Again, both of you, not only her, but both of you doing such a great job here tonight. Again, I, it's a learning experience for us all, even for myself as well. I mean, I've never called a volleyball game before in my life. I had to go learn beforehand. Again, still have a lot of work to do, but again, both of you doing such a great job here tonight. You can see Bud Broyles right there doing a lot of coaching here, and that's exactly what he does. I, I appreciate your words of encouragement. It's certainly a new experience for me, as for you as well, learning volleyball. Uh, and so far, we've had a really good game. In. As I believe it was a photo op, Mark Gordon down there taking some stylist pictures as he does all so very well here for the college as the first set looked like it was on the line here in this one as that one was awfully close here. Maybe possibly could get a, get a replay of that last one on that last serve by Oriana. And Talon awarded that we are not allowed to get a replay, so we have a replay when I don't want one, and then we get one. When I want one, we don't get one. So that one, that one awarded, though, to the Lynx here, and this one tied at one after this one on a good kill there. Might have been tipped at the net as well. Elijah, what did you kind of see there? Yeah, the ref called that the, it was off the block. Otherwise, that, that ball would have sailed out of bounds. Um, because it hit the block, it's considered played, and the, therefore Goshen should have gone after the ball. And Linder hit the net right there, 2-1 in favor of Goshen so far here in this one. And again, 21 set to serve. It really bugs me here that I have to say his number instead of his name. I do apologize, but however, he's not on the roster. Is that one denied, though? Right there from Goshen, sent back the other way. And here they go. All of a sudden, a 3-1 lead for Goshen. And kind of seems like they're starting to build a little bit more momentum off of that set three win. Yeah, they're coming off of a win. And of course, that's a big motivator for your team, especially knowing that, hey, it's not over yet. We still have a chance of winning this. And I'm sure that's what their coach talked about in that he in between set timeout. And now they're, they're showing them you know, just who they are and how they play. A little bit of a mishap there on some of the volleyballs going around. As Wesley has the right one, he's set to serve. Goshen with the nice set, Rob Ajibe. Sends it right back to Wesley though. Oriana with a nice set to Matos. As we'll see if Goshen can't get it back over. I believe that was Rob Ajibe just sending it over the net. Same with Oriana, but it was sipped back around. Oriana saves with the set, but Scott right in front of the antenna right there. Nothing much he could have done there. And talk to you a little, talk us a little bit about the antennas here in this one. Not wires as I was informed earlier here in this one. But however, talk to me a little bit about the antennas. What exactly are they there for? So they're the out of bounds line for the, the volleyball court um, on the net. Um, if a ball touches the antenna, it's considered out. Uh, so we saw that he hit that right into the antenna. And Elijah? does his best he he told me before this started that he knew all about volleyball and i told him well good because i didn't know nothing and i i unfortunately and luckily i've learned a little bit here but that's something i didn't know so elijah good work there as again the links with the point make it four three here in this one and again elijah actually told me he's like don't worry i got your back and he did right there is that one awfully close from washington and they do say it was in the alliance judge said it was out well now they they reverse it here a little bit, they reversed the call, and maybe possibly a replay of that here in this one. They, they, well, now they reversed it back to the Lynx here in this one, so it's 4-4. Interesting choice there. Elijah, have you ever seen something like that before? You know, I haven't, and to me, honestly, that ball did look like it was out of bounds from where I was looking. Um, so the call was definitely questionable. I think giving the point to Goshen should have been the right call there. And we're going to have a replay of it here in just a second after a point being made, and that was the fourth hit there by Goshen. So now let's see that replay one more time of Nick Washington's serve. Right, I want to see what you think about this. Put on TV or something. 
even there, it's so hard to tell on that replay. Uh, Again, just on the far side of things, our camera couldn't quite pick it up in time. Awfully close oh. as that one right off of 21 and awarded the point here to the Lynx. And we talked about it earlier with Nick Washington. You can see him getting fired up here for the Lynx, talking to his team here in this one. We saw him go on that big run earlier in set two. Starting to do it again here in set number four. Absolutely. He's a strong server, aggressive there, but that's what happens when you're aggressive. You hit into the net sometimes but that's okay because you're playing your best and you're getting your team points, and that's what matters here. Throws that one right into the net. I'm gonna have to talk to him in class on Tuesday about that and saying, hey man, if I praise you, you're supposed to put it over the net here in this one. 6-5 though is the score. Still in favor of the Lynx though is Rabajibe with the serve and Matos with the kill on the other side of the net. And again, he, you can see he's a real hit and miss type of guy. I actually love the way Matos, you, you mentioned it earlier, the swing. I mean, him and Carter really both uh, high flyers here in this contest. However, though, sometimes, like you mentioned, just a little bit, sometimes too fast. And that kind of, you see some of the airs go in, but not right there as he gets the ace. No, absolutely not. He's, he's a strong all-around player, strong server. He's not afraid to serve into that block, which we love to see. It makes for an entertaining game and a stronger player overall. And Rodriguez just going to have to send it over. There's Key Lion. Washington to Coleman. And it seems like just dial it up right there. Key Lion. Again, Washington, Coleman. I mean, you could even trade left and right between Coleman, Carter, whoever else you wanted. As there's a timeout taken by Goshen College here in this one. 9 5 is our score here. Possibly uh, maybe a replay of that, of that last kill right there. Good pass by Key Lion there and then he just brings it down and terminates the point there. Awesome play, awesome offense. And you can see Coleman and Scott right there hugging it out as this has been a Lincoln College team that they're really a, a tight-knit group. I mean, even in the cafeteria, you see it all the time. I mean, these guys eat, sleep, basically breathe, and if anything else they could do together, they would find a way to do it. Oh, absolutely. They're they're always together. You always see them in campus in a group walking around. and It's an awesome, and it makes for good communication on the court as well when you're that close. You just feed off of each other. You're seeing it right now, 9-5. Our score here coming out of the timeout taken by Goshen College here in this one. And this is a, a Lynx team just moved from, again, National Collegiate Volleyball here in this one to NAIA Volleyball. So a lot of these teams are going to be much different types of teams. Much Maybe is, that, is, is it a different type of play as well going from club to NAIA or, an, an, or say, NCAA for uh, whatever reason? It, it really depends on who you ask. The coaches of club teams are going to tell you no. They're going to tell you that they're better. But then when you get to the coaches of, you know, conference teams, they're going to say club teams have nothing on us. So it's just, it just depends on who you're asking really is the answer to that question. Well, the Lynx just hung a national club championship banner here tonight. And once again, Coleman right there showing why maybe possibly club teams could be possibly better than some NAIA teams. Oh, absolutely. And they're, they're a strong team with strong plays. And they're... 10-5 our score here in this one. Again, the Lions judge didn't quite understand that where that last one hit. Maybe hit or miss here in this one. And now we have a replay of that last one. Let's see if it really was an ace for Matos. That looks like it's just on the line there to me. I think that was a good call. I couldn't I, I'd have to agree with you as well. That did look did look like it was inbounds, and they go right back to it. Yet again, same exact spot as he finds it yet again. As two for two there for Matos. I don't think Goshen really agrees. However, though, replay says otherwise. Oh, absolutely. And Matos has found that spot. He's going to keep serving there until the other team adjusts to fix that open. There. There's a block there from Carter and Coleman here in this one. 13-5 here in this one. Let's see that block. Maybe one more time here in this one. 
Just uh, puts it straight down, doesn't he? Absolutely. It's a solid block, good penetration, nice stuff block there. And then Matos just on the, the service air right there. But a good run there for the Lynx. They lead it now 13-6 over Goshen College here in set number four. Bennett sends it over to the net. Washington to Linder, who originally had it blocked, but it does stay on the Goshen side of things as Keyline just trying to save it. Maybe an interesting pass there, but I don't think he understood or, or saw that Matos was right there behind him. Right, and I think there is a better way. He could have stepped back to take that, take that ball um, in a more, a better receiving mannerism. Bennett gets it over Carter one more time. This one a little easier here in this one, but still counts as a kill all the same. And again, 14-7 lead here in this one as we'll see maybe maybe a replay one more time as while that one goes a little long here let's see let's see the kill the from Carter you see he goes up and he just has such good form his arm is back he's taking a full swing and following through with his swing making for a great kill it's hitting right on the court where it should and the block is having a hard time stopping the attack there and Keeman serve a little long there with the service air. That'll give the ball right back to this Lincoln College team who's been all fired up here today. Scott and Oriana come back in as well, along, I believe, with Wesley, who got Coleman, Washington, and Carter. Maybe possibly send it down to Matty Geese here in a couple seconds. 15-8 our score as Rodriguez throws down the kill there for Goshen to kind of give them some signs of life. 15-9 now is our score. Rodriguez set to serve here one more time, and I'd have to say, Elijah, probably by far Goshen's best server so far. Oh, I would definitely agree with that. He's serving a float serve, which is really hard for a passer to really pass because they kind of move along as they go, so you're never getting a great contact on a float serve like that. 16-9 now after the kill right there from the Lynx yet again as Linder now set to serve here for the Lynx. Here comes Rabajive right to key line, but he digs it out as Carter, or I'm sorry, that's Scott who gets it over back over the net there. Rod, Rod, Rabajive one more time. Linder is there. Scott denied though at the net trying to go for the kill, but they might have said that he touched the net. Well, one official awards it Goshen. The other official awards it Lynx here in this one. Now let's see yet again. Here comes the captain, I believe, that one is going to be Wall. It'll be interesting to see what they, they score this one here. One official went one way, the other official went the other way here, here in this one. They do say award it to Goshen, I do believe, as they do, and they do award it. So that'll make it 16-10. Now still in favor of the Lynx, though, but Elijah, what kind of happened on that last play? How does that stoppage kind of affect the Lynx here while they're on the roll? Um especially when one ref calls it one way, it can be really frustrating when the other ref is saying it's another way because you think you did everything right and one ref agrees with you and the other one's saying no. And so your your morale kind of goes down when ultimately it's decided against you. And Geeman couldn't save that one here with the point. Does go the links. They up by seven now, 17-10. Here as Wesley with the serve. Rabba Jibay probably would have been a little bit long here in this one, but Wesley saves it otherwise. Matos does get it back over the net. Then he steps right up, tries to save it yet again. That ball's still live, but Coleman knew that that was going to be the fourth hit, and that's all the Lynx could have done right there in this one. They tried to save it. It was a good save. However, sometimes those four hits come a little too quickly. Oh, definitely. Um, I especially agree with you on that. I did see that that was out of bounds there. It would have gone out of bounds, but... You can never fault someone for <laughs> digging up a hard hit ball like that. And it looks like Matos on the set must have slipped or something here on that last one. Again, award it to Goshen College. Let's see what happened here with Matos. He's approaching the ball, tries to go off on one leg, isn't able to get the height that he needs to really hit that ball. I think it's also set in an awkward way, and he just wasn't able to make an adjustment to get a good swing on that ball there. 
17-13 now as Goshen had a point coming out of that replay as Scott trying to do it. Oriana sets it up for Matos. He tips it back, but tips it right back to Oriana. He puts it back over the net, just kind of sending it over as I believe that was Bennett who just behind the back pass. Coleman trying to throw it down with authority. It was tipped at the net and then blocked right to, again, Coach Daughtry here in this one. So that will be a kill there for Coleman as Washington, Carter, both check into the game as well as Oriana and Scott both check out. Washington set the serve. Goes right to Rodriguez in the back row. Wall to Bennett, but it was blocked at the net by Carter or Coleman. Here comes Robin Gbe one more time. Key line is there. Set by Washington to Matos. Goes across the court, but denied once again by 21. And we are going to have, a B, I believe, a four hit or, or something along those lines on that far side. Elijah, the point is awarded to the Lynx, though, however. What did you see? Uh, the ball was hit into the antenna by Goshen, automatically awarding the point to, to the Lynx. 19-13, our score. Washington one more time. Rodriguez saves it out, but here comes Robert Bay. He cannot. As a good dig, or try, I should say, right there. I believe that one was Rodriguez. As his teammates pick him up here in this one, 2013 now. As the Lynx with Washington yet again still on this comfortable roll. Yeah, they've got Washington back there serving. He's serving hard and consistently, and it's just building a lot of momentum for the Lynx, and they're able to just play volleyball their way. Uh, Goshen's having a really hard time. And what a set and a kill right there for Charles Carter here in this one. As let's see that replay one more time here in this one, because I really want to see this set more than anything by Washington. We see that. He gets down on his knees there to get that ball. And that's, that's a good setter when you can adjust to make that adjustment to set up the ball to, to your hitter. 21-14 now as that one into the net right there. Now it will be Robin Gbe now with the serve here for Goshen College. 21-14 as he goes to Lindor. Set by Washington to Matos. Blocked though by Rodriguez. And I believe him and Matos, they must be having themselves a day down there because these two really stepping up in that front row for both squads. It's now Tibbet, you can see him, he's standing up a little bit, getting a little antsy because this is the late, later part in the game where you're starting to see now, this is where that Lynx team kind of lost it a little bit in set number two, or set number three, I'm sorry. Right, and we're seeing, you know, Matos being aggressive at the net there, but we're also seeing the Goshen block really getting over to where it needs to be and being really effective against Matos. That one blocked at the net, though, by the Lynx. 22-15 now in favor of the Lynx. They've already won to the first two. The lost set number three, looking to take the third or the fourth and final set. Hopefully here, looking fairly good so far, as I believe that might have been a four hit right there for Goshen. 23-15 now, all of a sudden, Daughtry not taking a timeout, and there is the timeout that we were so desperately looking for for Goshen College here in this one. Now, I believe we are going to send it down to Manny Geese here on the floor okay. to see what she's got. Brent. <laughs> Sorry about that, Matty. I understand you've got some uh, insight on the, the team and the game. Yes, I do. Um, the assistant coach, Alec, actually played here at Lincoln College, and he actually kind of founded the men's volleyball program here at the school. And if you can see, it's grown quite a bit, and they've accomplished a lot. And it's just kind of nice that Alec is here with them, coming back to his roots and really taking charge of the program again. Yeah, it looks like he's doing a great job out there, and the players really respect him, and that, that's good. Okay, guys, back to you. Thank you, bud. And Maddie, for those wise words on Alex Exparza here in this one. Again, the men's assistant coach here for the men's team. 23-15 our score. Matos set to serve. And a hard server there. And Robin Gbe saves it, though, however. Here come the links back the other way as Washington to Charles Carter, who, again, you see so much of that power here in this one. That's where this time it does come in handy where he just kind of lets up a little bit. Let's see it. 
Oh, absolutely. He sees this open spot on the court, and he just knows he needs to soft hit that right to that open spot. There's no one guarding that. That's a free point to him. And what a good replay that was. Is that one awarded to the Lynx here in this one as they win here by the final score here in set number four, 25 to 15, as that will do it here on Banner Night. What a great way to start your home opener here in this one as you win the first set 25-23. Win the second set, 29-27. They had to go a little extra. But however, had a pretty good lead in set number three. Couldn't get the job done. Couldn't close the door there in that one, 25-23. Goshen, but then come out in the fourth set. We talked about being able to close the door. This time, they got the job done. 25-15 here in set number four for their fourth win of the season. Absolutely. It was a great match. We saw lots of great hits, lots of great serves, and... We're hoping to see less errors as we get on into the season as well and just see the Lynx do their thing at home. And this is a, a Lynx team right here in this one where they, they're kind of so letting the fans know, thank you for coming out, thank you for supporting us and coming out here today in our home opener. They do win the fourth set though, 25 to 15 here in favor of the Lynx who took three of the four here so far in this one. Again, in just a few moments, we will send it down to Matty Geese with a word with Mark Tibbet here in this one. But so far, Elijah, what did you see in this contest that, I mean, really kind of sealed the deal for the Lynx? Ultimately, I think it's uh, uh, Matos. He is his serve. It's got to be there. He's got to be aggressive. Um, when he starts to doubt that, he... Uh, and again, real quick here, let's send it down to Maddie here in this one. Almost a week off, and that showed early. Um, I would have liked to have seen us, you know, just play a little smarter at times. There were times we just kind of got tight and didn't pass the ball very well. But we pushed through those times. Um, I give a lot of credit to Goshen. They really played hard on defense. They never gave up, and it really, you know, forced us to have to win the match rather than give anything away. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a good win. It was a good win overall, but um, yeah, certainly we can play better. So you guys played them in the past. How is it different playing them this time from when yeah. you guys played them last? We won in four last time. Uh, we was a very similar similar match. Every set was close, and they, uh, I know they, I think they had already played a few matches before then, and we were playing our first match at that time, so I think that was part of it there too. And But we're pretty evenly matched teams. I mean, I feel like we definitely have uh, advantage in athleticism in a few positions, but uh, they've got some talented players. So we're, we'll see them one more time. They'll come back here again in uh, end of March, and I look look forward to that one. I think that'll be another good one. And then, what players from our team do you think really stood out tonight and helped the team? Uh, I thought our setters did a nice job of uh, you know keeping balls alive, finding open hitters. I think um, you know both of them did well. Uh, when we could set our middles. They were lights out. They really did, both um, both middles. So yeah, and our libero TK had a great night. He was had some nice digs and just made smart plays and good th good things in serve receive. So yeah, when you're strong, kind of up the middle, that's good. Yeah. And then coming from this game, what are you guys going to take away and work on within the next couple practices that you guys have? I think we just need, one of the things we definitely need to do is talk more and talk great confusion for the other team with our work. Quiet at times. I think we, we we relied a lot on just being better athletes than teams we've played in the past, but at this level that's just not always the case and you gotta do those little little things extra. So we're gonna stress talking more, being more being louder on the court, which the only time we have a problem with that is when we're playing. Every other time of the day we're loud all the time, every place else. So we gotta transfer that into uh, onto the court. All right, well, congratulations. I'm going to let you go talk to your team. Okay. But there you guys have it. Back to you guys. And thank you, Coach Tibbet, there for the great words. And again, thank Matty as well there for a great interview there. But that's going to do it all here for us. The Lynx win in four sets. I do, I do like what Coach Tibbet had to say about his players here in this one. The setters did do a great job. And again, TK, he's talking about, again, Trenton Keylion in that contest. That's who he was referring to here in that one. But again, the Lynx took care of business here in set number four after losing set number three they win it here in four again our next broadcast again here will be 
Again, next volleyball broadcast will be next Friday, February 15th versus Culver Stockton. Again, they've been a ranked team a time or two before, so it should be a good one here in the Jack Dean Arena. We look forward to seeing you there. Again, we'll see you tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon for a ba the men's basketball game right here. Again, taking on Lindenwood Belleville as well. Adam Hoffman, Nick Jackson on the call with you in that contest. 3 o'clock start time. Don't be late here right here on LCTV. Again, we want to thank the entire LCTV crew alongside me. He's Elijah Cox, Matty Geese, and I'm Nick Jackson signing off, and we'll see you right here tomorrow night.